What is the best weapon in Grounded is a frequent question I get asked. Without the exact damage and attack speed numbers in the game, it was a tough question to answer with 100% confidence. Today, however, thanks to the hard work of some members of the community, we have the numbers to answer the question of which weapon is best. Before we start, I want to caveat everything that's going to follow is subject to change. There have been weekly balance patches since the 1.0 release, and at any time, any weapon could have its stats changed. There will be links down in the description to the information I'll be discussing in this video. So what we're going to be looking at in this video are the best weapons in the game. I'm going to spend a minute or two on Tier 1 and Tier 2, just in case you're new to the game or you're starting fresh. The bulk of the video is going to be spent on Tier 3. Now, in terms of how I'm going to be deciding what the best weapons in the game are, we're going to be looking at DPS. DPS is obviously calculated by determining how much damage it's going to do per second. Unfortunately, the game, as you can see up here in the UI, does not tell us exact numbers. In fact, the UI is actually confusing, and something I didn't know up until very recently was the damage bars are not even the same between the different tiers. So as an example, if you just look over here and say the Stinger Spear does 1.5 damage, that's not the same as a weapon that's a tier 1 that does 1.5 damage. In fact, the way the bars work is one bar at tier 1 is equal to 5 damage points, one bar at tier 2 is equal to 8, and one bar at tier 3 is equal to 10. So what that means is there might have been situations in the past where I was leveling up a weapon and thought it might be doing more damage than another weapon, but because of the different tiers, it was probably not do it was obviously not doing it because I believe this is the way the it's always been. So basically the tier 3s do more than the tier 2s and the tier 1s, but you can't just look at this and say, "Oh my gosh, the bar's filled up for a tier 1, that's not going to be as good as a bar that's filled up for tier 2 or 3." The stun we're not going to be talking about in this video. Stun basically is how much stun it applies to an enemy. Every enemy has a stun threshold, which will basically stop them from attacking and allow you to do more damage to them. And then the speed down here, there's three speeds in the game, I believe. I think there's 0 0.5, 3 0.5, and then there's 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, actually 8. Looks like they made it 8 now. So these are not linear. And the way to calculate the attack speed, somebody actually went in and looked at the code and the animations, all this stuff... I'm not even going to get into the technical details. So someone went in and figured out all the DPS calculations looking at that. And what we're going to be doing is determining which weapons are actually going to do the most damage at each tier. So first off, we're going to be taking a look at the tier one weapons. And in this basket, I have three tier one weapons. So we're going to be looking at the spear, the pebblet dagger, and the spiky sprig. So looking at the three tier one weapons we have in our inventory here, we have the pebblet spear, the pebblet dagger, and the spiky sprig. You're going to notice the pebblet spear has about, it looks like one damage, and has a high attack speed. The Pebblet Dagger has a slightly lower damage, but it looks like it has the same attack speed. And then the Spiky Sprague has more damage, but a much lower attack speed. So more likely than not, most people are probably going to think, well, the Spiky Sprague does the most damage because it has the highest damage meter. In fact, it does do the highest damage per swing, but it swings the slowest. So of these three weapons, the one that the way they're rated actually by DPS is going to be the Spiky Sprague is the third best weapon to use early. The, the Pebblet Spear is actually the second. And the Pebblet Dagger is the third. And this is where the confusion comes in because if you look at this, you're going to say this does more damage and it has the exact same attack speed as this. But in fact, because of the animations, if you we, if we equip these weapons, you'll notice that the swinging, the swinging animations of them are just completely different. So if we put up the Spiky Sprague and show how, how slowly it swings, it takes quite a while to get three swings in for the combo. The Spear is obviously going to be much faster, so we can go one, two, three. But if you look at the Dagger... The dagger, look how much faster that swings. Even though on the UI, it shows the exact same stats for the swing speed here, the dagger actually has a slightly faster attack speed. So it makes the pebblet dagger the highest DPS early game weapon. Now, there are some caveats to this. Number one is if you throw a spear or a club, you can actually throw any weapon. But if you throw the spear or the club, they do way more damage. So as an example, throwing the spiky sprig at something, we'll see if we can find the enemy out here. Throwing the spiky sprig at an enemy will do a lot of damage. It'll do actually 3.5 times more damage. And then throwing the spear will do five times more damage. So the spiky spray, because it has more base damage, will actually do more. Let's see if we can hit this guy. And we missed. All right, come here, buddy. And we one-shot him. Now, we probably would have one-shot. We would not have one-shot him using a just using the weapon by hitting it. But we did one-shot him there. So it does about, like I said, 3.5 times more damage. The throwing the spiky sprig is actually a good strategy for taking down tanky enemies early game. I've seen people saying they just craft like 20 or 30 of them. Because if you look at the crafting recipe for them, they're su it's super cheap to craft. And you can get it right at the start. It's sprigs, thistle, and he doesn't crude rope. You spawn in with sprigs all around you. And there's a couple thistle plants where you can get, I think it's like 70 thistles per plant. So you could actually make, what's that? 70 divided by 5 is 14. You can make 14 spiky sprigs from one thistle plant. And if you just sit there and spam them at like a ladybug or a bombardier beetle... You can just take them down super quick. In addition to that, the spear, I, I prefer throwing the spear just because it just seems more accurate throwing it. So if you throw the spear, I'm just going to throw it at the, the juice box here. It'll probably bounce off. The spear seems much easier to hit because it doesn't do the overhead throw. And you can seem to be able to hit your targets better. This does 3.5 times more damage. 
than, or excuse me, five times more damage, but it doesn't do as much damage as the spiky spray throw, but it does do a tremendous damage. I've been using this in my new woe mode playthrough for taking down, specifically, it was really good for taking out the bots in the labs, even though they're resistant to stabbing damage, throwing two level zero peblet spears at a Ruz T takes it down. And I think it was maybe four at the Taze T. Those things do a lot of damage in WO mode if you don't block properly. So those are the weapons that are the top three weapons for tier one. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the tier two weapons, the best ones for those. Now, real quick, there are many more tier two weapons than tier one. One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning was there's actually a tier one sword. It's a larva blade. It is not in the top three for DPS. It does apply poison, but because you can't stack poison early game, it's just not that useful. So taking a look at this basket, we're going to be looking at the top three. In this case, it's going to be four because there's actually a tie for second. And I didn't want to, ex I just wanted to show off the th three different weapons because two of these are almost exactly the same. So we have the Bone Dagger, the Bone Trident, the Stinger Spear, and the Black Ant Sword. Now looking at their stats, you're going to see that the Bone Dagger has, a, I believe, the lowest attack damage. It has the lowest attack damage, but they all have the exact same attack speed. So looking at this just on the UI you'd probably think that the Black Ant Sword has the highest DPS of these weapons because it has the, even though they have the exact same attack speed, it has a, a lot higher damage, especially than the Bone Dagger. And in this case, it's actually the third highest DPS between these four, or it's, it's the third, it's the fourth, but in this case, third, because two of them are tied for second. And the reason for that is the animation for it, the swinging for it is just a lot slower than the daggers. So as you can see, it's going to take a lot longer, and especially that third hit, it's got that big chopping action. So in this case, it's going to be number three. Tied for number two is going to be the two spears, the Bone Trident and the Stinger Spear. The difference between these two is the Bone Trident can apply stun. It has about five times the stun of the Stinger Spear. The Stinger Spear has this tiny little chance of stun, but it also has the critical hit chance. In this case, if you watch my video on the crits, crit builds in this game, it only has a 1% crit chance. So even paired with like the early game coup de grass, you're only have like a 3.5% chance of critting. It's just not worth it for that extra little bit of damage. That you're going to be doing every whatever it is like 20 hits or so it's just not worth it so i'd recommend between these two using the bone trident because it has a much higher chance of stun one thing of note also along as i mentioned earlier you can throw weapons in this case it's worth throwing these spears because they do do 4.4 times more damage when you throw them so they can be tremendously helpful also these are going to be useful underwater because underwater the only weapons you can use are spears or daggers now honestly this was surprising to me and honestly looking at the if you look at the ui it doesn't really make sense because the Bone Dagger has the least damage, but it shows having the exact same, exact same attack speed as the other three weapons we're showing here, but it actually has the highest DPS of these weapons because of the animations. We saw earlier that the daggers swing faster than the spears. The sword with that very slow third attack is probably what's slowing it down. That's also the one that's doing the most damage. So of the early game, of the tier two weapons, the Bone Dagger is going to be the highest DPS. Last but not least, we're going to be taking a look at the tier three weapons. I'm sure this is what most of you came for. And in this case, we're going to quickly take a look at the crafting menu here. You're going to notice there's a lot more tier threes and tier twos. We're only going to be looking at the top three for DPS in this video. Of course, we have specialty weapons like the Mint Mace and the Club of the Mother Demon that are, this is a boss weapon. This is a specialty weapon because it has fresh defense, fresh built into it. Now, you'll probably know if you're following along that the weapons we're going to be looking at are not going to be the slow swinging clubs, even though they do the most damage. We're going to be looking at fast attacking weapons that do decent damage. So let's just jump in here and take a look at the three weapons we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the Rusty Spear, the Toenail Scimitar, and the Widow Dagger. These are all new weapons that were added in the 1.0 update for Grounded. So first up is the Rusty Spear. The Rusty Spear is obviously a spear. I did upgrade them upgrade them because we're going to be I'm going to show them off in just a second. You'll notice that it has about like two and a half bars here. It has very little stun, but it has a high attack speed. It also has infection. What infection does is it lowers an enemy's ability attack speed by 10 percent, as well as the attack damage by 10 percent. the toenail scimitar also has infection you'll notice that it has a higher base damage here same stun and it looks like the same speed and then last but not least is the widow dagger which has lower damage same stun but a same attack speed in this case this also applies poison damage this is going to be useful if you're doing a poison build with either the spider armor the mask of the mother demon or even the widow armor late much later on so ranking these from three to one in terms of DPS, coming at number three is going to be the Widow Dagger, which has about 109.5 DPS. Number two is going to be the Toenail Scimitar at 112 DPS. And number one right now, the highest DPS weapon in the game overall is going to be the Rusty Spear at 119. Also of note is if you throw the Rusty Spear, it does 3.8 times damage. So it does a tremendous amount of damage. Now, before we take a look at these in action, what I want to do is mention one other thing we haven't talked about up to this point. These weapons might have the highest DPSs, but that does not mean they have the high, they're going to have the highest DPS in every single situation. And the reason for that is the game has weaknesses and resistances for creatures. 
So this was added, I think, in the Hot and Hazy update way back when, like last year sometime. And what this means is each creature or most creatures will have weaknesses and resistances. These will be found on the creature card in your data tab. You can unlock these by peeping the creatures. Right now we're taking a look at the Wolf Spider. So up top we're going to see here is the weaknesses. It is weak to chopping, slashing, and spicy. That means it's going to take more damage from chopping weapons, which are axes, slashing weapons, which are sword, some most swords, and also the daggers, and then anything upgraded spicy. It's going to be resistant or take less damage from stabbing weapons, which would be spears, the some of the swords, as well as arrows. And then it's also going to be resistant to fresh, which would be the minty upgrade. So because weakness and resistance system, there's going to be situations where the rusty spear is not going to be the best weapon or the toenail scimitar is not going to be the best weapon. But if you don't want to carry around a bunch of specialty weapons, using specifically the rusty spear and the toenail scimitar, just having these two weapons is going to get you through most of the upper yard without much trouble. Now, I'm going to recommend using the Rusty Spear for specific enemies and the Toenail Scimitar for specific enemies. First off, we're going to look at the Rusty Spear. So in the upper yard, I'm going to recommend using the Rusty Spear against Black Ox Beetles, All Black Ants, Black Widows, All Fire Ants, the Green Shield Bugs, Ladybird Larva, Spiny Water Fleas, Termites, and Ticks, all the Termites, including the Termite King. And then the Toenail Scimitar is going to be most useful against Dust Mites, Ladybirds, Orb Weavers, Tiger Mosquitoes, and Wolf Spiders. Honestly, if you have either one of these, you're going to do a decent amount of damage, but I was just kind of looking at the weaknesses and the strengths of the different enemies. So overall, the Rusty Spear, if you just wanted to have one of these weapons, the Rusty Spear is going to be fairly decent, but if you want to be able to just mix and match between the two of them, I'd recommend having both of these. If you're doing the full poison build, obviously go with the, you could use the Widow Dagger, although if you're using the, uh, the Mask of the Mother Demon, you could still use either one of these weapons. And also you can use combos. You could use the infection here and then pair it with another weapon. But what I'm trying to do is basically because we have limited inventory space is figure out the way to carry the least amount of weapons and have enough space in my inventory to be able to carry back as many resources as possible while also dealing with the enemies. So what I want to do is we're going to take a look at some the at least the Rusty Spear and the Channel Scimitar in action to see if I can find some Wolf Spiders and see how fast we can take them down with level 9s. I did want to mention that I normally go the Mighty Path for everything. For me, I'd rather just forego the couple extra percent damage I'd be getting from if something was like, as an example, weak to Salty versus the Mighty. Nothing is weak to Mighty in the game as far as we know. So I normally go the Mighty Path. If you want to go one of the other paths, you can do that as well, but I'm just going to go Mighty on both of these. So let's take a look at these two weapons in action against a Wolf Spider. So I found myself a unfriendly wolf spider. You can notice it cannot do damage to me because I have player damage turned off. I do not have any mutations on for this. As you can see here, I'm not using any armor except for the aphid slippers. So I'm going to use the toenail scimitar against this one first just to show how quickly it takes it down. So we're just going to do three hits, six hits, nine hits, 11 hits. Now, like I said, the spicy coltan, or in specific situations like this, other weapons are going to kill faster. Like the spicy coltan is going to kill it faster. But this will do if you don't want to be carrying around all these specialty weapons. Hopefully this other wolf spider is over here so we can see how fast it kills with the rusty spear. Is he behind here? There he is. So let's see how fast we can kill him. One, two, three. Well, you, well actually, this, the number of hits doesn't really matter. It's just how fast they go down. So as you can see, we're just blowing through him here. Now, of course, if this was spicy, it would be killing him faster. And do note that he is resistant to uh, stabbing. So he went down pretty quick. So just to recap, the Toenail Scimitar and the Rusty Spear are the two weapons I recommend using in the upper yard. You can also use them in the lower yard as well. It's gonna, they're going to mow through most of the lower yard enemies. Again, they're not going to be the best weapon in every situation, but overall, if you want to free up most of your backpack space, and just carry a few weapons, use these two weapons. Also want to mention that I've been told that the Rusty Spear is actually the best weapon to use against the Black Widows. It has the least resistance to it for whatever reason. Even though it lists every basically every resistance on there, it is least resistant, I think, to stabbing specifically. So if you want to take down Black Widows, make yourself a level 9 Rusty Spear. Again, I go the Mighty Path. If you want to see all the information on all the weapons in the game, I'm going to leave links to the two Reddit posts down in the description below. Thank you to the two people that put those Reddit posts together. Make sure you check those out. Make sure they give them an upvote. If anything changes with the DPS calculations... After more balance changes, I'll make sure to make an updated video. But as of right now, these are the two weapons I recommend using. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And here's another video you might want to watch as well.